I think that um, when I look at the Tattoo Two Steps, what I see is solidarity. And I think um, in the anti-racist movement across Europe, what we need is solidarity. Solidarity across the different kinds of manifestations of racism, whether this is Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, um, Afrophobia, um, anti-Gypsism, and all other kinds of like, um, you know, expressions of intolerance. And I think what we need is solidarity amongst all organizations, advocates and activists working in this field. And that is how I see these 32 steps, you know, taking a step, because thinking about ourselves, thinking about our neighbors, how to be good neighbors, how to be political. I think that all of this, like it's, it's more about, you know, taking a step away and like coming together, having this very strong um, bond together as, um, as a community. And I think that that is how um, we can use the, the tools in um, the 32 steps in our anti-racist um, movement. And of course, bringing us together. Even those outside of Europe, those at the borders of Europe, the migrants who of course are um, suffering from the consequences of like some of the racialized policies, um, which um, are basically part of Europe's migration policy. So I think that it's really about all different groups, all communities, but of course, especially uh, migrants as well who are at the borders of Europe. And when I think of the 32 steps, I think that um, how to be a good neighbor. I think that's really very important because politics is going to be politics. Politicians are going to be politicians. And why we can try to hold politicians accountable, I think that what is more effective is communicating, the non um, communicating um, to everyone within our communities how to be a good neighbor. Because when you see someone as a neighbor and not as a migrant or as a Roma or as a black person or as a Muslim person or um, as a Jew or as it doesn't matter, this is your neighbor. And you have to treat your neighbors the same way you would like to be treated. And of course, this extends to, um, you know, the neighbors of Europe as well. So like, even um, the people at the borders, these are our neighbors. And I think it's really very important that we send across this message because the very same way migrants are otherized outside of Europe is the very same otherization that happens with people that are perceived um, of coming from migrant backgrounds as well. They might not necessarily be migrants. So it's really important spreading this message of how to be a good neighbor. What steps can we take to be a good neighbor? Sharing food with one another, sitting together in communities and talking about our faith, our different um, um, belief systems, understanding, listening um, um, to one another, organizing community cleanup sessions, having community book clubs. I think really going grassroots and really um, a bottom-up approach, um, I think, would be one of the ways that we can really combat, you know, the racialization and otherization of migrants, people of migrant groups, but of course, people who do not necessarily um, belong to the in-group, whatever this in-group is. The, the campaign is carrying on. Yes. Um, currently, it's across different uh, um, um, states, countries in, in, in Europe. And of course, I think that um, the, the Make Racism History Festival and the hashtag, it's about a reminder of the journey that Ina and of course all the members of Ina have um, come or how far we have come over the last 25 years. But it's also a reminder that we still have a long way to go ahead. So I think that um, this hashtag needs to live on as a reminder and as a concern, you know, um, um, alarm clock in a way that, you know, there is a lot more to do. And I think that that, this hashtag, and of course the hashtag of 32 Steps is together, I think it really fits um, perfectly.